Hello and welcome to this Blender tutorial brought to you by Louis Arts. It's your boy Emmanuel Lokafo, and today we'll be simulating 10,000 toilet papers. So this past few days has, have been quite different from what we are accustomed to. Like the days are quite slow because we have little, no, nothing to do. We just sit around and watch TV and sleep. Uh, but just um, to brighten our day and make fun of the whole situation, let's try to create 10,000 toilet papers inside Blender. So we'll be creating and simulating it. So let's just jump right in and start. We want to go ahead and add a cylinder. So we'll add a cylinder. And before we click on anything, we want to go to the edit and adjust last operation. So since we'll be um, simulating like 10,000, so we need to be conscious about the poly counts. Um, if not, we're going to crash Blender. So for the butter scan, we're going to set this to 8. And for the cap fill type, by default, to set end gun, but we're going to switch this to nothing. Okay. And let's say this is the final shape of the tissue, uh, the final radius of the tissue. Okay. So let's keep modeling. So inside edit mode, we want to select everything and hit E to extrude. And then we'll hit S to scale and we'll hold on Shift Z. And we can just scale this down okay and now if we hit y if we hit y it's going to separate this face and make it its own face so now we can just extrude this slightly up and we have a basic tissue if we smooth this out it looks better so we can just add some head loops to deal with this normal artifacts and we can even go ahead and add subdivision and increase the number so you've gotten your quick um, toilet paper so for now let's turn this off and let's create quick, a quick material so for that we'll go into the material tab hit new we'll call this the white and we'll call create a brown okay so for the brown inside the edit mode we'll just select this and do assign and we can just play with color. So since there'll be like a lot, you um going very close. You you don't want to. You don't have to worry about like it being really detailed or having detailed shade up because it's going to be like there'll be lots of um geometry. So it won't really matter. So then for this, I'm just going to reduce the roughness. The specularity. Sorry and yeah so we could even add some um, sharpness to this edge by holding shift e to even give it more definition okay so we have our basic toilet paper so you can have different style if you want so now for the simulation um, what we want to do so I'm going to set the final render to be 1 and the viewport to 0 for the subdivision. Okay, so for the simulation, what we want to do is just move this up, apply the rotation and scale, and make sure you center the origin. Now we'll just add an array modifier. Okay, and we'll play with the X location, and then we can increase the count. So for the count, we'll set this to 10, okay, and we'll add another array modifier and change it from X location to Y location. So you can do negative Y too in case you want to flip to the other direction and we can just move this out slightly. So for this, we'll also set it to 10. So we have 100 here. And we can add another array. And this time we'll set this to zero and the Z location to one. Or we just we can increase that slightly. And for the count, we'll set this to 10. So we have about um, 10,000 now. Okay, uh, now we have gotten the basic, um, we have created a lot of instance of the tissue and we can go ahead and apply this so you want to apply it from top to bottom and once you're done applying it you can go into the edit mode and because we have like low 
polygon count is going to be really um, nice for our processor. Um, now we can hit P and we'll separate by loose part. So before we do any other thing, we want to hit M and create a new collection and we call this tissues. So we can keep the scene organized. And now we can select everything and hit the W key for context menu and we'll do origin to geometry. Okay. And even to, so now to simulate this, we can select this, all of all this objects, move it upwards. We can even go out of EV mode so we can move faster. Anyway, so uh, right now it's looking to organize. We want to give it some randomness so that it, when we simulate it, it's not a perfect shape. We want to have like very dynamic looking shape. So to do that, selecting all the objects, you want to hit this F3 for search and you want to search for randomized transform. So you could just search for random and you will see the randomized transform. So once you click on this, nothing was, it will seem like nothing is happening. But if you click on this menu here, and we do um, location X, if we set this to like 10, so you can see it's beginning to randomize stuff. So let's just set it to something like two, or maybe 0.5, just to break things down a bit. And for this, we can rotate this randomly by five, Okay, so now we have um, randomized stuff a bit. Okay, and we can go ahead and select the object menu and go down and scroll so you can see add active. So it's going to add a rigid body. So before we play it, let's add a plane that will serve as our passive or as our floor. And we can go to the physics tab and click on this plane and we'll do rigid body passive. Uh, we can leave everything as default and if we hit play, we can see what we get. So this is it. We've gotten the simulation. But um, right off the back, it's uh, I want it to be a pile because what we're getting now is just it's spread out too much so I want it to be like piled up together so to do that I'm just gonna select everything and then I will select one so just select one any random one and holding down alt we can change the values for all the selected at once so what I want to do is go down to surface response and for the friction I'm just going to increase it to a very high number this is going to make it um, not be so this is going to help it reduce the motion so if we play it again we can see we're getting more of a pile um, kind of simulation and we can even increase this too just for the sake of it so now uh, let's say we're happy with this and we want to proceed we can easily go to the word settings and you can see we have your rigid body check. Once you add the rigid body, this is created for you. So we go to the cache and let's bring up our timeline. So let's leave it at 250. It will not take long to bake and we can just go ahead and hit, hit this bake. And Blender is just gonna calculate everything for us. So it's done baking and we can play this now just by scrubbing the timeline. So you can see what we have. So now um, let's set up for quick render. So this is going to be our sim simulation underscore flow plane. So we, we can duplicate this and hide one of it since uh, we don't want this rendered. We just want it for simulation. But this for rendering, we can just scale this down slightly and just try to create a studio. So we can select the edge, extrude Z. And we'll just grab this edge and bevel it slightly. We'll add an edge loop here and add one here. And now we can just add the subdivision. Okay, so 
we smooth it out we have a basic studio setup and we can add our camera so let's try to get a nice angle and right now we don't have like a focus object um, so let's make one special so we can select this just to make it stand out from the rest because there's nothing interesting about just bunch pile of tissue papers so we can just go to the material um, create a new material and we'll call this we'll make this pink so it stands out from the rest so there'll be something interesting to at least look at you can do it for a couple of um, tissues so if you hit ctrl l you can copy material it's like okay so it's just it looks a bit interesting now um, now we can get the viewport and turn on the opacity Okay, and if we hit render, uh, probably we will not get a nice result. Let's play with the light in it for a bit. So I'm going to be using HDRI, HDRI to uh, light this scene. And I already have like a default one which I usually use. So if we hit material preview and check scene light, we can just, I'm using a nice add-on that allows you to just move your mouse to spin the HDRI. So I don't think I'm getting a nice lighting. I can try another one. So um, let's get something indoor, There's something like this, and I'll reduce this gamma. So I've gotten a lighting I I I'm happy with, and I can select the studio plane and just give it a nice blue color, so it stands out from every other thing. And I'll reduce the specularity. Okay, uh, now we can start rendering. So uh, if we hit hit F F12, uh, let's see what we get. Okay, so this is it. It just took 17 seconds. Um, let me show you my render settings. I have the render sample set to 70. Though I'm using a denoise, I'm using the denoiser. Um, the strength is set to, set to 2.25. The glossy, I'm not using direct, I'm just only affecting the indirect. Okay, uh, now, okay, just to even make it more interesting, let's add depth of field. So I'm going to bring out the material preview and let's turn off this word scene for now and just get a very dark, dull material so we can be able to see the effect quickly. Um, if I select the camera, and go to the camera setting I can click on depth of field and select an object to affect or select an object to be the focal point and once you do that we can now play with the aperture the f-stop sorry if I set this to like point 0.2 um, we can start seeing the effect so it's going to focus more on the object. Um, in the it's going to be focused more on this pink object. So I, I ended up with the value of 0 0.09. Um, so with that, I can hit F12 for another render preview. So for the composition, let's first play with the color color management. We can set this to medium to so just give it more contrast so it looks like this but we'll just stick to medium high contrast and we'll go to composition on uh, the compositor and enable it and here we can do some color correction and just some cool stuff uh, so what i will want to do or want to try is um, add some volume to it like fake volume with the misc the miss uh, node and slight set it to lighten so i'm just going to reduce the factor slightly and here i can play with 
kind of like a tinting the shadows to give it like some volume probably 0 0.02 it's okay and after this i'll just add a contrast to just bring back um the nice sharpness okay and finally um just some basic color correction i'm going to set this to offset bar and just play with something that tells the story the story better or looks visually appealing okay so this is not bad and we can just conclude everything with a filter and set it to sharp just to make things more obvious and I'm going to reduce the factor to like 0.2 and that will be that so I'm going to go back now and let's prep for final render so for final render I'm going to set this to um, 1080 um, resolution of 150 and for the render i'm going to set it to 200 which my um, the noise are turned on so let's hit render okay so it's done rendering and i'm quite happy with how it looks so i'm going to go ahead and render out a simple animation and let's see how it turns out so thank you for watching this tutorial i hope it was helpful if you wish to see more from me don't forget to hit that subscribe button um, stay tuned. I'm going to play the animation after this.